So this is Bob Montgomery again, Vice President of Sales Product Development at Generex. Uh, today I'm just going to walk through quickly an overview of our main product Bylox as well as our secondary product Bylox HT. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. Try to move fairly quickly to keep everyone engaged and make it uh, as interesting as possible. Uh, first, just a brief bit about Generex. Our company headquarters is in Alpharetta, Georgia. We were established late 2013, early 2014. And we specialize in using low-cost uh, industrial products and byproducts uh, in order to convert into high-quality additives and fillers for plastics. Uh, we expect that we're going to be breaking ground imminently with very large capacity to, uh, to service a number of different markets. We'll talk a little bit about some of those markets here quickly, uh, who we focus on, who we bring the most value to. Uh, first, just a brief uh, description of a bioadditive. What is it? Uh, to those that don't know, what is the space that we play in? We are an additive and or a filler. Typically, these products are cellulosic fibers. Uh, they have that long aspect ratio that adds stiffness and, and reduce impact of products. Um, the problems that we've run into in the past is, or that other people have run into in the past, is that with this long uh, aspect ratio, the product doesn't maintain the same performance as its uh, precursor. So if you use it as a resin extender like Bilox is it intended to be used, it tends to embrittle the finished product. Uh, also bioadditives historically are not very thermally uh, stable and generally can't be dispersed easily into different products. You know, This is one of the things that really sets us apart and has made us very excited to introduce the plastics industry to both Bilox and Bilox HT. Bilox itself is a uh, Bio-based material certified as being USDA uh, cert certified as 98 plus uh, percent bio-based. It's based off a corn protein isolate. We can break this into uh, two main products again, Bilox and Bilox HT. It's designed to be a resin extender, which means we retain the original properties of whatever resin we're loading into. Typically, we fit best with uh, PLA and other biodegradable products, low temperature processing products with Bilox. And with Bilox HT, you'll see that we have a much wider window and can participate as an additive or filler to a very uh, robust and, and versatile stream of different additives. Also, uh, we found that Bilox and Bilox HT both lay up very effectively and disperse very effectively. We can master batch up to about 85%. We've seen some formulations that we can disperse from master batches of 90%, which really gives us uh, a great advantage from an economic perspective to be competitive even now where olefinic products are historically inexpensive and be a good uh, cost dilution element for both bio-based materials and petroleum-based pro uh, products from 10 to 30%. Again, I've mentioned a few times Bilox and Bilox HT, so just a quick snapshot of what we are. Both of these are heterogeneous but consistent mixes of products. Both are very uh, low cost. They're designed to be fillers or additives uh, for various different instrumental materials, including polyethylene, which we know is very inexpensive today. Uh, Bilox itself has very high ductility. We've seen it be used uh, extensively or, or very effectively as a uh, plasticizing component. We see processing temperatures actually be reduced and viscosity be reduced with different uh, olefinic and, and low temperature processing materials. It's also shown very promising results in terms of oxygen barrier in films, which is really interesting for elements like fumigant films. Uh, Biolox has an amber base, so we do have a little bit of color. Both products are going to have an opacity that's inherent to them. Uh, so that's something that we understand and uh, we go to the market you know, forthright with. Uh, Biolox HT uh, also heterogeneous. Also, we view as being uh, very competitive in pricing, something that could offer good cost dilution economics to particularly uh, PLA and, and some of the more um, challenged resins right now in the low-cost market, but should also be affordable and, and not affect the uh, finished price point or perhaps help the finished price point of even some olefinic solutions. Uh, we've seen thermal stability up to 250C, this is an envelope that we keep pushing every day and something that we've made great strides on. Uh, there are no material restrictions, perhaps is a little bit misleading because we can't participate with high-end engineering thermoplastics. 
But within the commodity sector, we haven't found any materials that Biolox HT can't mix with, can't disperse with, and can't process with. Uh, for modifications, just looking at the history again, uh, we've moved very quickly to expand. And Biolox HT, our newest iteration as of August 2014, has actually seen several new technological breakthroughs since then, where we've raised the thermal stability ceiling, we've reduced the odor signature and found ways to neutralize the odor signature altogether, uh, and we found ways to couple, blend, and work into different miscible or different systems uh, through all sorts of different conversion technologies, be they injection molding, extrusion, film, blown film, uh, cast, profile, uh, really any type of process with the lone exception being rotomolding because our products are just like any additives, don't melt by themselves and such don't, uh, don't tend to stick very well. So one of the big things that we've seen, and this is kind of what we talk about when we look at what Biolux HT brings to the table. Uh, when you look to incorporate a bio-based additive or filler into a polyolefin, you're used to polyolefins having this very wide processing window where they can go with a low shear or high shear process, they can go with a low temperature or a high temperature material. And the little blue rectangle here that you see is where most bioadditives tend to fall. It's very difficult for them to participate with polyethylene or polypropylene because they simply break down too early. With Biolox HT, we've completely blown the, uh, the roof off of that assumption. We found that our product can process you know, this, this chart here is actually two months old. We are well past the, uh, the window that we even showcase here, and we can process through some of the higher temperatures that polyolefins are processed that I would speculate that there probably aren't any temperatures that we can't participate in. Our product is also significantly less shear sensitive than the other products in the space, and we do so at a very low cost position that allows us to bring real value without changing the price point of the finished polyolefin solutions. Uh, particle size of raw Bilox is about 10 microns. The fact that the raw product is round in nature uh, really helps us because, again, that, that keeps the product from having the aspect ratio and orientation that implies different shrinkages onto uh, the different systems that it's going into. Um, that helps us blend into any variety of different products and, and processes and really sets us apart from where uh, we, we typically see our competition fall short. Uh, so Biolox and Film, this is one of the application spaces that we're very excited about. Uh, for HDPE as an example, we do not add uh, stiffness like you would typically see, but we act as a very effective resin extender. Here you'll see uh, in this chart 10 and 20 percent loaded bylocks in films that ran very smoothly. We can get down into finer and finer um, film thicknesses depending on what the uh, what the customer's needs are, and we continue to push that envelope uh, every day. You know, we're very excited with what we can do in both poly uh, polyolefin films as well as more sustainable plastic films, such as agricultural films. So, in the agricultural film space. Uh, we think that we add value to both polyester-based products or the biodegradable type products, as well as the polyolefin products. Obviously, the more of a low-cost filler or additive that you're able to incorporate, the more of a price break you get, the more expensive the base resin is, the more significant that savings is. But we've found significantly and, and consistently that our product has worked both to fill and retain performance, as well as uh, in some cases, improve oxygen barrier characteristics. Uh, injection molding, also something very uh, intriguing to us and exciting. This is unique to Biolox HT and something that we see uh, vastly superior performance of our product compared to uh, competition. So we're seeing with a uh, neat homopolymer polypropylene, a nice improvement in impact. We've also seen that performance uh, replicated with polylactic acid. Uh, we've seen, again, the flex modulus not completely changed, so the product still has the same feel, still has great surface, great aesthetics, is slightly less expensive, and uh, processes just as easily at a little bit lower cost. So 
really exciting for us, something that we think will generate a lot of growth and a lot of interest uh, in applications that tend to take a little bit longer to uh, cycle, develop, process, and close. Biox HT and PVC, again, something that we're very excited about. The ductile, rubbery nature of, of both Biolox and Biolox HT lend themselves very well here. We found in PVC, we already see customers that use very uh, highly filled systems. So they're already two-thirds uh, extremely low-cost filler using products like calcium carbonate or talc. Um, we don't look to even displace those products, but rather displace some of the PVC resin or some plasticizer combinations, depending on how the product is processed. We've seen some uh, processes where we can displace the PVC and plasticizer composition uh, by about 33% of how they're loaded into that remaining 33%. Uh, so we can take out about a third of that 33% without uh, losing properties and reducing total products. Uh, again, for building and construction, this is important because adding uh, bio-based content allows you to gain lead credits. We don't have any red list materials on our product. We don't have any... Uh, change in terms of curl, warp, or, or uh, any type of structural uh, integrity loss. Uh, we haven't seen any type of extraction from the product over time yet. Uh, and we've seen, you know, certainly a significant cost out from plasticizer and cost parity or reduction from those flexible PVC resin systems. Uh, EPDM rubber is also something we're looking at that we've seen some interesting properties around both Bilox and Bilox HT seem attractive to this space. Um, we tend to decrease torque uh, and have very little impact on some of the other uh, key characteristics that these rubber products are made from. We've actually seen arguments that we can displace either oil or carbon black from the formulation as well as potentially displacing a little bit of both, which is new to us. It's a space that we're not uh, as familiar, but something that we're learning and, and chasing down on a, uh, on a rapid basis. Uh, again, certification status of Biolox, I mentioned this earlier, we are USDA certified as being bio-based. Uh, we tested out as being higher than 98%, both with Biolox and Biolox HT. Uh, we found that our product is aerobically compostable per the ASTM D6400 uh, certification process with PLA, as well as our product, if it's compression molded or, or molded into its own uh, component, would also be ASTM D6400 compostable on its own. Our product is not OXO biodegradable, so it is not going to break down olefinic systems such as polyethylene or polypropylene. Those products that are stable will remain stable, and we haven't seen extraction products from there. Um, we are not FDA approved for food contact yet, but see no reason why our product will not be approvable since we don't have any products in our formulation or process that would prohibit us from, from reaching that type of uh, certification. Lastly, just some contact information. You know, we think that we've got something very exciting. We are preparing to break ground, so we're going to be aggressively looking out for, uh, for customers that want to try this product and, and incorporate it into their systems. Uh, feel free to reach out to myself or Chris Kennedy uh, to request a sample today. We can provide powders, master batches, and we really work very closely with all the customers that we're developing to make sure that we fit their solution as effectively as possible. Thank you very much for your time. I hope I uh, explained a little bit about what we're doing and why we're so excited about it. And I hope to hear from you soon. My name is Gustavo Simões. I am Nanox CEO 
and I would like to introduce one presentation about Nanox and about Nanox products. Nanox is uh, the first nanotechnology company in Latin America and today produce and commercialize antimicrobial products. Uh, Nanox uh, is established since 2000, 2005 Nanox is a spin-off from uh, Feder São Carlos Federal University, a very important university in Brazil, uh, especially in material science and, and nanotechnology. Nanox is based in São Carlos. São Carlos is around uh, 200 kilometers from São Paulo, capital. Nanox has many, many partners uh, like uh, grants agents, agents like FINEP, uh, CNPq, FAPESP, SEBRAE, and Nanox since 2006 has one venture capitalist, is a Novarum fund. So here Nanox, uh, in Brazil Nanox has four patents, in US and Europe Nanox has two patents to cover different parts of uh, our technology. So Nanox started in 2005 with using uh, grants money to develop uh, uh, technology, uh, 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 antimicrobial platform uh, using silver-based materials. Since 2006, Nanox received uh, received uh, uh, venture capitalists uh, like Novaro. Novaro invested in 2006 to to Nanox created a, a, a commercial uh, commercial uh, offices in, in Brazil commercialize different kinds of uh, nanotechnology. In 2007, Nanox received a very important uh, award in Brazil. Uh, FINEP has an award to, 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 to do this, this award for a, a more innovation company in Brazil. In 2007, Nanox received this, this award by FINEP. Uh, since 2008 and 2009, Nanox creates a very important uh, and very robust platform to to produce antimicrobial products uh, like silver-based uh, materials. And since 2009, Nanox exports this technology from from countries like Mexico, Colombia, Chile, uh, Argentina. And since 2009, Nanox created this uh, world platform. To, to sell these products and since, since 2010 and 2011 Nanox uh, got the, the regulation uh, about, about Mercosul as a um, visa, visa is a, a sanitary agency, is very important to sell products for, for example, food packaging or, or, or products has food, uh, food content and since 2000, 2012 and 2013, Nanox got FDA approval for, for to commercialize our products in U.S. markets. And Nanox participates from of the the key fair in, in Dusseldorf in 2013. And in this fair, Nanox uh, created several partnerships around the world with the resellers and distributors. And today. Nanox has uh, one facility in Brazil, distributors in Chile, Colombia, Mexico, US, South Africa, Jap Japan, uh, East, Europe, uh, East Europe, India, uh, and resellers around the world. So what is the Nanox Clean? Nanox Clean is a, a technology platform. Nanox produces several kinds of products using silver-based material special to plastic applications and today Nanox can can cover different kinds of uh, uh, different kinds of materials like metals plastic rubbers uh, woods uh, and and textile Nanox can can Nanox ha, has uh, technology and products to incorporate uh, our product in different kinds of products for plastic application, Nanox has basically three, uh, three, three products. One product is a silver-based material, is a most important for us because this product is a food grade. 
uh, NENX CAB Nanox has uh, approved uh, regulation like FDA and Visa, uh, Europe regulation in different, in, in different parts of the world and this product is possible to use we uh, to use with uh, a, a packaging uh, with a food uh, a food materials. So uh, another product, other products like AZ and ATZ, these products are, are, are uh, a mix with uh, inorganic and organic antimicrobials like zinc and like triclosan. And these products are more bactericide and fungicide than, for example. A, B, but this product is not a food grade. But our our main product is NNX C, A, B, our food grade. So how how does Nanox prove the antimicrobial property? There there, is, there there are basically two standard standards to prove this. The, the most famous is GIS Z twenty eight zero one or ISO uh, 22196. Uh, uh, this standard is possible to compare samples with and samples without an anox clean, for example. And you put, for example, 1 million of the bacteria, and after 24 hours, uh, it's possible to measure the reduction of the antimicrobial compared with and without uh, samples. And in this in this example, you, you can you can see the products reduce 90 percent of the bacteria. Uh, in this case, is E. coli and Staphylococcus. So this study is, is very important to prove the antimicrobial uh, efficiency. So how to how do to use Nanox Clean technology in plastic? Is uh, Nanox is a powder. Here in Brazil, Nanox produces one powder. This powder is not a nanoparticle, it's a microparticle. The product is a composite uh, using silica and silver. Silica has a, the size of the silica is around, uh, is around 10 microns, and the silver island, Nanox puts some silver island on silica surface. In this case, the, the, silver, the silver size is around point. 0.2 microns. So after this Nanox prepared this powder, it's necessary to prepare a master bath. Uh, the master bath is very important because it's very difficult to 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 have a, a, end, a end product with a, a very interesting uh, homogeneity if you don't if you don't use a master bath. So it's necessary to use a master bath. And after you can apply this master bed in different kind of products, it's possible to prepare master bed of the several of the several uh, products like PE, PP, EVA, PET, PVC, engineer plastics. So the master bed is very important to 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 after you 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 have a a, a very important uh, property in in the the final application. So the, nano, the Nanox Clean AB is a food, a food grade, uh, uh, the antimicrobial is a food grade. So the silver, silver is a, uh, the active of the, the Nanox Clean, and silver kills several, several kinds of bacteria. Uh, silver silver is, is not a selective uh, antimicrobial because there, there are basically three mechanisms to kill the bacteria. The first mechanism is silver ions entering, in, uh, entering the microorganism membrane and causing several damage uh, in, the, in the cellular wall. The after the silver ions uh, are high reactive with enzymes and can uh, uh, can kill several several vital parts of the the bacteria, and one very important part is the silver ions interact directly with DNA, and because of this, the bacteria don't create uh, don't create uh, resistance with a silver uh, a silver antimicrobial. So Nanox has several studies about toxicity, about migration. Because of this, 
the, the Mercosur regulation visa approve our product since 2011. So the migration of the products is a very, very uh, low migration and, and is around uh, 10 times less than the, the visa and the FDA uh, approved to, to use silver materials. So since 2013, Anox uh, approved, our, approved our product in FDA. Our food contact uh, number is 1235 and it's possible to use our products in directly uh, in packaging uh, because Nanox has FDA approval to, to several applications. So the most important uh, application, in my opinion, for, for antimicrobial products is a, a food and beverage uh, packaging application. Why? Because in this, in, in this case, now, uh, the antimicrobials, especially Nanox Clean, can improve the food shelf life. In this case, there, there, there are three uh, examples with rigid packaging and flexible packaging. For example, tomatoes, it's possible to increase the shelf life with the two, two days for 26 days. Uh, ap apples, it's possible to, to, to improve the shelf life from six days to 20, 20, 23 days. And bananas in, 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 in bags, in, in flexible packaging, is possible to extend the shelf life. Uh, the, the shelf life depends on, on the, the bacteria concentration, the, the environment, the packaging, the several, the several, uh, the several features. But Nanox Clean can can protect the, the packaging surface and in this packaging surface you don't have uh, bacteria and you, you don't have uh, uh, bacteria growth. So another, uh, another example is with lettuce, tomatoes, apples, it's possible to improve different, different uh, vegetables or fruits, especially fresh, uh, fresh food it's possible to improve more the, the food shelf life. One very interesting case, uh, Nanox sell for, sell, is selling to this, this, this application since 2013, is a fresh milk. Uh, a fresh milk in Brazil, is, uh, the fresh milk is, is, is sell in bottles, in, in HG PE bottles, and Nanox put some, some master beds in these bottles and you can improve a lot the, the, the shelf life. Here in Brazil, the, 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 the fresh milk shelf life is around six, eight days. This is a, 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 a blue line, a, a red line, sorry, it's a red line, is a, a bottles without Nanox clean. Bottles with Nanox Clean, you have, you can improve the shelf life in 18, 18 days, from 8 days to 16 days, only to put uh, 1,000 ppm on the uh, on 1,000 ppm of the active in the the in the the bottle. The product is in the bottle, not not in the milk. And because of the, 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 the antimicrobial protect the, the bottle surface, and because of this, the, the, you decrease the, gro the bacteria growth around the, the, uh, during the days. Because of this, you can in, uh, increase the, the shelf life. So there, there are another applications uh, in Brazil. TAIF is a Brazilian comp to Brazilian company to, to produce uh, professional beauty professional equipments like hair dryers. Uh, in this case, Nanox can reduce the, the contamination in the hair dryers. Put some some uh, materials in different parts of the the hair dryers. IBBL produce water fountains, water coolers. In this case, uh, Nanox can improve the water shelf life for two until ten days because if you compare water fountains without Nanox Clean, the water shelf life during maximum two or three days. 
after you apply Nanax Clean uh, enter of the, the, the water fountains, you can extend the shelf life from two or three days for ten days. Tapete São Carlos produce uh, carpet and rugs in this case, in the in this application is a a, a, fiber, a PP fiber. Nanox introduced this this product during the extrusion of the fiber, and the, the product is, is possible to reduce the VOC and uh, the product kill mites too because the mites uh, eat bacteria and fungus. If you don't have bacteria and fungus, the there isn't mites. The B Atlantic produce uh, dental dental offices, special dental equipments. In this case, Nanox sells um, around 15 products from from to the B, because the B put our products in the chairs, in the tables, in different equipments, instruments, in different parts of the dental office. And the B can sell for the uh, the dentist the concept of the bio safety, uh, the, the the concept of the bio safety. Mabi GE produce uh, home appliances like refrigerator. In this case, the Nox sell sell master bed from to Mexico since 2009 and, and might be applying in different parts of the refrigerator, especially in the box, when you put, for example, vegetables, fruits, uh, is a PS, uh, PS, uh, PS box, and in this case it's very interesting because our product doesn't change the PS transparency and you can, uh, you can have uh, antimicrobial properties using a, low, a very, very low concentration. Uh, Ecomaster is a Brazilian compounder to produce master, master beds. Ecomaster buy uh, our actives and sell for different applications, special sanitary seats. This is the, mo the, 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 most, uh, the most important uh, case for us until now. Uh, Alps produce a uh, PVC film, a PVC stretch film for to food applications, and Alps launched uh, uh, six months ago these films using antimicrobial. When you can you can improve the the properties of the food, you, you can improve of the the safe the safety of the the food using uh, PVC films with antimicrobial. So Nanox has uh, uh, customers in different in different areas. Antimicrobial products has many many applications. Here there is uh, examples. For example, uh, the 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 coatings, marketing, wood plastic compound marketing, home appliances, uh, uh, cosmetic. Uh, uh, cosmetic apply, cosmetic industry. Nanox can sell products for different uh, for different uh, markets, and this is this is our these are uh, uh, our customers here in Brazil. So this is I provide for for everybody one one a short intro, uh, short review about Nanox. Uh, if you can if you have some doubts or, or, or any, any doubts, you can send me email. My, my email is here, nanox at nanox.com.br and, and I, I, I looking forward to hear your, hear your comments about our presentation. Thank you very much.
É, no dinâmico cenário atual, inteligência e interatividade são os valores que serão referência em nossos mercados. Hoje, na série de conferências da Innova Plus, convido vocês a percorrer comigo o mundo de fibras inteligentes e interativas, chamadas de tecidos funcionais, também conhecida como e-textil. É um prazer ter a oportunidade de compartilhar este fenomenal tema de tecnologia inovativa com vocês. Bem-vindos, sou Liliana Rubio, PMO Polymer Business Intelligence. O slide eh, considera uma pesquisa geral referente ao mercado por trás de o que chamaremos de aqui para em frente da palestra de e-textile. Hoje, eh, o mercado global representa 200 milhões de dólares e se espera que duplique para 2020, o qual faz muito atrativo explorar, desenvolver e implementar projetos nesta área. Por gentileza, observar que esse mercado envolve de má, da, uh, mais simples tecnologia até negócios de altíssimo valor no futuro. E também podemos identificar que gera e textile uma aliança estratégica entre diferentes indústrias e mercados, como são eh, fashion, medical, eh, exports, eh, arquitetura, eh, o qual é sumamente promissório. Mas eh, se precisa eh, um profundo enxergamento das megatendências neste processo também. Nessas áreas inovativas, Importante desafiar a vocês com uma pergunta. São líderes ou copiam? É, muitas das iniciativas exigem uma convergência entre seus objetivos corporativos e os mercados mais promissórios como é e textile. Mas para isto é, se precisa um profundo enxergamento das mega tendências. Eu trouxe para vocês quatro que estão perfeitamente alinhadas com o tema e são Xmart is the new green, innovation to zero, wellness and well-being, and connectivity and convergence. Vamos a falar um pouco de cada uma delas. Xmart is the new green. É, uma evolu é a evolução de produtos verdes para produtos e serviços inteligentes, onde inteligência está ligada à excelência na eficiência, conveniência e poupar. É, nós podemos entender melhor com uma equação matemática, onde é, esforço, tempo, e movimento eh, nos leva a zero. Porque o, o aspecto maior da criação efetiva é a perfeição e é fundamental para a nossa sobrevivência industrial. Exemplos eh, no mundo e textil são o que chamamos sistemas de vestimenta para saúde onde exploramos a capacidade de combinar sensores inteligentes com fibras, senhais de processamento de dados e telecomunicações na plataforma e textile. Bom, em Innovation to Zero, quer dizer, inovação para resultados além do Zero. Não é considerada uma mega trend, é considerada uma mega visão, zero visão, e faz sentido no progresso relativo à sustentabilidade e eficiência. Por exemplo, eh, na passada feira de, de nosso setor, a NPI 2015, foi exposto o conceito Zero Waste. É, zero desperdício e nosso mundo tem convergência com o, tem, com, o temo, com o tema de reciclagem que define práticas que copiam os ciclos naturais de sustentabilidade da natureza 
onde o material de descarte ou sucata, é, popul popularmente conhecido no nosso meio, é resgatado e convertido em fonte para outros usos. Então, é, é, o conceito zero waste, por, ex por exemplo, por, por exemplo é, se adota o uso de fibras a partir de reciclado, tipo PET, ou se incorporam tecnologias de ponta, como aquelas de tratamento de fibra para evitar manchas nas roupas, para eliminar o processo de passar as roupas, que se pensamos bem, reduz uma série de consumo energético em todo o processo. É, na, na próxima, não? que é wellness a uh, well-being, means saúde e bem-estar, que são é, fundamentais na evolução e diferenciação do desenvolvimento nesta década e as décadas por vir. Não? Globalmente, os investimentos é, na área falam por si próprios. Por exemplo, eu quero mencionar o trabalho maravilhoso da Comissão Europeia, que inclui uma plataforma só para projetos testes. Projetos muito importantes, especialmente na área biomédica. Projetos referentes a monitoreamento da saúde usando tecidos tipo biosensing, só para mencionar alguns, alguns deles. Bom, e na última, é, mega trend, Connectivity a Convergence, Conectividade e Convergência. O importante aqui é o tempo em função da funcionalidade. Então, desenvolvimentos relativos à biomimética, biométrica, polímeros eletroactivos, sensores piexoelétricos são relevantes e importantes, não? E esclarecem é, que os temas conectividade e convergência são diferentes. Nós podemos desenvolver produtos é, e textil dentro da conectividade quando falamos de comunicação, resposta e interação em qualquer momento ou lugar. E convergência quando incorporamos desenvolvimentos inovativos que envolvem mais de uma indústria. Neste caso, é, é relevante falar de a interface entre a indústria textil e a cosmética não? e a farmacêutica que leva a, a criação de novos mercados chamados cosmotextil é, e herb textil. Não? Temos que esperar que muitos países adoptem as práticas de países desenvolvidos como os nórdicos, não? onde o aumento das aplicações no mundo e testa já são expressivas e totalmente alinhadas com estas é, megatrends. Bom, é, no mercado atual, interessante observar que 30% é, do mundo e testa está ligado ao mundo militar, não? A gente pode imaginar como as roupas inteligentes podem prover características de super-homens, não? Com tecidos condutivos hiperresistentes para, para camuflagem, não? Que incluem microeletrônica e tem a capacidade de promover o melhor desempenho do corpo humano e adequar conforme o requerimento final. Agora, é importante esclarecer para vocês que quando queremos entrar a negócios inovativos, como é 
y Testai, debemos incorporar modelos de negocio apropiados, como hoy el caso eh, de, de este que estoy presentando para ustedes, un slide, que eh, envuelve un crecimiento voltado para customización y personalización. Importante entender que son termos diferentes, ¿no? Customas, custom, eh, customización quer dizer desenvolvimento bajo eh, una medida conforme as preferencias do usuario y personalización es una adaptación de algo que ya existe o futuro da criação está em como nossa indústria irá atingir este modelo conforme quatro fatores críticos. Solução, é, valor, acesso e informação. E oferecer uma experiência de compra funcional, conveniente e de custo-benefício percebida pelo mercado, que nos leva novamente ao foco, tempo em função da funcionalidade e equação zero. É, fora disto, de ter foco nos atributos, na era da indústria e textil, todo se movimenta de tarefas simples aos mais avançados sistemas inteligentes que puedan traducir o complexo que da respuestas alineadas eh, eh, con los factores cuerpo, mente, alma. ¿Ya? Quiere decir, mente y seguridad, cuerpo, confort, por ejemplo, y alma, valores. Todo esto garante que nuestro desarrollo eh, tenga suceso cuando en el triángulo Fazendo uma medição dentro do triângulo, atingimos 70%. Não? Medida conforme as preferências do usuário. É, e, portanto, ter foco nos atributos que os consumidores aleiam, desejam. Os avanços eh, tecnológicos ¿no? têm sido aceitos pelos consumidores porque incluem um apropriado desenho para atingir as expectativas deles. ¿no? Os novos desenhos, eh, a diferença do passado, estão fortemente voltados a factores tais como peso, forma, gerenciamento térmico, de humedade, de proteção e... Eh, e até aquele psicológico factor de sentir-se bem. As roupas inteligentes misturam, não? por exemplo, microcomunicação com sensores de interface, processamento e cabeamento, microgeradores de energia, é, mistura com superfícies nanoengenharia, tais como fibras conductivas, microinterfaces, é, inclui microsistemas de sensores para detectar até nosso estado físico, tipo atitude, fatiga, saúde. Todo isto eh, traz eh, o novo mundo chamado e testa eh, Não podemos priorizar eh, excelentes performances com desenhos baseados num sólido entendimento do mercado final e das capacidades internas das nossas organizações. Porque, no final, tudo depende até onde nós queremos, nós, nós queremos ir, até onde nós queremos atingir é, é, mercados do Oceano Azul, mercados é, diferenciados. É, bem, Dentro de desenvolvimento e integração desta tecnologia, é importante falar sobre as origens do tecido, as origens 
de esta nueva innovativa eh, innovativo segmento llamado e textile y entonces yo trouxe para vocês algo muy interesante referente a la evolución del origen eh, ok yo voy a transportar vocês a, a eh, un inicio de la humanidad donde eh, tenemos un lema Sitius Altius Fortius que fue el lema propuesto por Pierre de Coubertin fundador del Comité Internacional de Olímpicos en 1894 eh, este tema tiene un profundo eh, impacto en nuestra sociedad y podemos considerar como a base eh, de nuevo y testar ¿por qué? porque fue inspirado en la creación de los antiguos Juegos Olímpicos de Grecia en el siglo VIII después de Cristo y en aquella época los esportistas competían nus porque la ropa no permitía un buen movimiento y atrapaleaba ¿no? entonces la piel humana que es un sofisticado órgano era todo porque permitía el control total del cuerpo para atingir rápido eh, alto, fuerte y desde entonces la procura es que la ropa sea eh, nuestra segunda piel y eso entendió muy bien eh, este, este mercado de e textile ¿no? tener ese foco principal que es mimetizar y potencializar las funciones naturales de la piel humana un campo revolucionario de innovación ¿no? y la evolución de los Juegos Olímpicos por ejemplo en no el sé, siglo XX y XXI tras como resultado eh, muchas mudanzas y avances en eh, no el mundo activo, por ejemplo, eh, eh, veamos la diapositiva, la evolución desde de 1905 hasta los días de hoy, donde eh, a gente entiende que un nadador tiene eh, un incremento de 300% de desempeño so posiblemente también más en, en, en buena medida pelas ropas imaginemos que eh, soltan jarna ten que nadar con ropa de la o sea él eh, tenía que luchar con la con, 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 con velocidad y su propia fuerza física y o peso de la y hacía un minuto y, o, y hoy a gente ya hace esto con sofisticadas fibras sintéticas que eliminaron totalmente aquel, aquel asunto eh, o cual tiene un tremendo impacto en la performance ¿no? entonces eh, y testa nuevamente la es un sector eh, que, que realmente está haciendo diferencia mesmo así yo creo que usted se lembra en 1980 eh, los Juegos Olímpicos ¿no? de, de aquella época que, as, eh, que fue incorporado tecidos inteligentes que ellos fueron considerados como topping ¿no? porque algunos eh, jugadores tenían esto, otros no y realmente hacían una gran diferencia eh, en el desempeño eh, cuando se usa esta tecnología a nivel competitivo Felizmente, ¿no? Eso te ha sido superado, ¿no? Y ahora tenemos buenas noticias, ¿no? En el sentido de que ya en los, los Juegos Olímpicos de 2012, a gente ya, eh, ya, ya enxergó y, y fue testemunha de ropa esportiva que incorporada en eh, la práctica de los Juegos, ¿no? Y qué interesante, ¿no? Porque la ropa esportiva incorpora esa tecnología como aliado y genera un balance muy importante entre alto performance y 
alta tecnologia. Então, agora, e textile war, ou textile segment, pues alinha no, os pilares originais de sítios altos, fortes, com o futuro inteligente, funcional e de alta performance. E esse novo e revolucionário cenário adota cada vez mais nossas funções corporais, físicas, mecânicas, naturais e eh, também as químicas, não? para o desenvolvimento de roupas mais sofisticadas. Agora que todos eh, concordamos não, sobre este incrível mercado, eu vou fazer uma abordagem referente às tecnologias atuais e aos grandes desafios que nós temos que, que ter neste momento, não? É, é, fazendo também uma passagem é, pela, pelas mega tendências que eu falei para vocês. Vejamos o primeiro exemplo, é, referente à termicidade. Bom, se lembram de a mega tendência relativa à conectividade, convergência, saúde e bem-estar? Isto é um bom exemplo de, de esta, destas mega tendências. Por quê? Estamos misturando segmentos, como o de tecidos, o cosmético, o farmacêutico, eh, gerando duas grandes novas. Eh, eh, novos mercados, Cosmotestel e Heltestel, e eles ali, ali, eh, alinhados perfeitamente com eh, grandes trabalhos, como os sobre tecidos térmicos especialmente, como é a biocerâmica, eh, todo o tema de infravermelho, de frequências longas, e todo o tema de microcápsulas. Então, aqui, este primeiro exemplo, eh, grande, grande eh, desenvolvimento, muito alinhado com a mega tendência. Eh, continuando com o, o, os exemplos, não? Eh, de e-textile, traço para vocês agora eh, o desenvolvimento e integração de tecnologias inovativas em nanotecidos. Eh, nesse sentido, fazemos uma ligação, uma combinação maravilhosa, uma mistura maravilhosa entre nanopartículas e algo chamado sensores piezoelétricos. Por exemplo, eh, você pode ter nanopartículas de ouro que estão indo desde 2 até... 150 nanômetros, mas cada um deles pode apresentar uma é, diferença importante na cor, a qual pode ser ativada por um piezo, um sensor piezo elétrico, e você pode fazer que sua roupa seja luz. Imagina viajar uma semana poder ter a mesma, o mesmo casaco, mas mudar ele de cor toda a semana só ativando um sensor que está ligado a os nanom, nanom, nanometers ou, de, 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 de la partícula que você tem na sua roupa e que você incluiu na sua roupa, é, nesse caso, ouro. Mas podem ser outras, muitas outras. Interessante, não? E, e perguntemos como isto não é sustentável, como isto não, é, não tem um impacto grande dentro de toda essa mega tendência que falamos, especialmente de eh, eh, Smart to New Green e de Innovation to Zero. A próxima, eh, particularmente, sou, sou suspeita de falar ao respeito, porque acredito plenamente na biomimética. Mas eh, um dos segmentos 
eh, la industria que más ten aproveitado no sé no sé o desenvolvimento innovativo a biomimética e o sistema testal aquí tenemos dos grandes ejemplos que es la eh, eh, los desenvolvimentos sobre isolamiento térmico y un referente algo más común que, que es normal más lo otro es algo que ustedes ya ya te han visto que son las fibras super hidrofóbicas que están basados en algo llamado nanocapilaridad, eh, aquel famoso efecto, efecto lotus, que hoy se puede obtener nanocapilaridad tanto de forma física como química dentro de, 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 nuestras, dentro de nuestras tecnologías. Muchas de las, infelizmente, aún están a nivel eh, universitario de laboratorio, más realmente eh, un área que eh, ya está... Eh, sendo bien vista para todo lo que se llama eh, superficie limpa o superficie autolimpante en nuestros en esos medios. Otro tema que realmente ese ainda no está siendo comercializado, más yo quiero traer para vos que fue a, a presentado en las últimas en los últimos congresos sobre tejidos inteligentes, el apache de luminiscencia. Él está vaciado en la bioluminiscencia que ven las especies marinas, donde él usa, él está obviamente incorporada la bioluminiscencia para muchos eh, efectos, como efecto de protección, efecto de alimentación, efecto de hacer la, eh, efectos de, de protección, como para el proceso. Más, eh, cuando el ser humano enxerga esto y quiere que su cuerpo, que nuestro cuerpo no es luminiscente, más que las ropas que la gente usa, sea, eh, teníamos un, un tema ¿no? que fue todo el desenvolvimiento de LED y de la fibra óptica. So que cuando hablamos esto en no el tema de, de tecidos, es un poco complejo porque ella no puede ser incorporada fácilmente porque ella es muy rígida. Entonces, los últimos desenvolvimientos que están en camino eh, ya ten como, ten, ten como, eh, o están en la procura allí que los recursos de energía que llevan luz eh, sean mucho más eh, factibles de incorporar en un tejido flexible. Y ahí está surgiendo algo que se llama la electroluminiscencia, ainda está en, en un nivel de desenvolvimiento, más los últimos congresos que existí, eh, eh, no, no, no estamos muy longe de que nuestra propia ropa pueda generar una luminiscencia como los eh, marinos, eh, como las especies marinas, sin tener que tener grandes... Eh, de, de, de eh, dispositivos eh, conectados a, 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 al teci a tecido, que se ya de una forma eh, internamente incorporada. Más aún eso está en, en niños de, de, de avalazar, pues, importante y otras procesos que estamos en el camino, de que nos y nos arropa sea luz. Ahora, otra, otro tema interesante dentro del desarrollo de integración, ejemplos, <coughs> eso está mucho más evoluido que en lo anterior, que los sea, ejemplos anteriores, el tema de tecidos térmicos, chino. Entonces, hoy en día eh, tenemos tecnologías que inicialmente fueron desarrolladas para el tema automotivo, más que hoy ya, ya están siendo elevadas para el tema eh, de tecidos o tema de la industria textil porque es eh, importante que las personas entiendan que un mercado se tiene que hablar con un otro mercado y entonces aquí llegamos a algo que se llama la Q Color Technology y que es esto <coughs> son partículas nuevamente eh, modificadas no tema de, de taman, tamaño y, y forma para que sean eh, capacitadas de trabajar 
no, no, na linha visível, a onda de luz visível e a onda de luz eh, de corto e longo infravermelho. E de, de essa forma, poder trazer para nós a, sensa, eh, a, a sensação, não, a, a, a fato de eh, cool, de frio. Eh, nesse momento, falamos de preto, que é muito comum talvez para vocês escutar no mercado, mas eu quero falar para vocês que hoje podemos ter cool colors, ou cores que dão sensação de frio real para o corpo, em contato com o corpo, eh, em, outras, em outras tonalidades, que não seja só preto. Desenvolvimento e integração de tecnologias eh, envolve, eh, obviamente, traço para vocês, coisas que ainda não estão no mercado, mas que estão sendo projetadas, não só no mundo eh, da moda, de fashion, também no mundo da arquitetura, como, I, como é Electroactive Polymer. É muito interessante, infelizmente eu não consegui eh, trazer para vocês um vídeo, de, de los últimos desenvolvimentos feitos por grupos de Dinamarca, não? mas eh, ainda não, não é comercial, mas ele eh, o que faz é replicar o movimento, ou seja, se você quer ir para, pela esquerda, toda tua, tua tua roupa se movimenta nesse sentido, só com eh, uma conex, interconexão que tem com um, um artefacto eletrônico. O polímero responde baseado em justamente eh, frequências eletrônicas. É algo muito interessante que está acontecendo eh, no seu futuro, assim como la, se lembra por teu dedo e já lea uma sinal sua. Neste momento, isso, eles lêem eh, tu, inter, tu, uh, os polímeros têm a capacidade de eh, ler o movimento. Eh, isto é uma tecnologia bastante novedosa e maravilhosa que está acontecendo, ainda não, não disponível, mas o que mais se enxerga de possibilidades é na parte de green building e arquitetura inteligente. Eh, neste, neste estamos já voltando, eu quero falar ao respeito eh, no desenvolvimento e integração da tecnologia, falar um pouco sobre biopolímeros e o que está acontecendo ao respeito. Bem, no passado, neste ano, aliás, em março, em Brasil, uma grande multinacional eh, lançou oficialmente eh, seu primeiro biopolímero para o mundo testar. E isso foi muito interessante, porque estaria em linha com o que chamamos ecotextile. E no passado, uh, eu tive, um, anos atrás, eh, realmente eh, possibilidade de trabalhar fortemente no tema de cores e aditivos eh, para a área de biopolímeros, ainda não enxergando o que está acontecendo agora, ou seja, enxergando, mas não assistindo o que está acontecendo agora, só a nível de piloto, mas naquela época a gente confirmou que clorofila, cúrcuma, carmim, urucum, tinham um excelente desempenho quando são incorporados em biopolímeros. Nesse caso que estou mostrando aqui na, na, no slide, foram os resultados feitos sobre PLA, uma resina que eh, vocês conhecem. Mas é muito bom saber que agora você já pode ter o que chamaríamos um uh, completamente verde. Que uh, polímero, cores e tudo o demais são de fonte natural e já podemos ter algo eco textile. Bom, Voltando, com, eh, continuando com, com o mesmo, aqui estou mostrando eh, algumas das, das resinas biopolímeros que realmente aceitam, eh, por minha experiência comprovado, 
o poder tener Corán, Chisea, Dichivos, Chiforma Natural. Eso para dejar esto como referencia para ustedes. Y ven, voy a terminar aquí con, con esto, porque hoy es súper interesante eh, dentro de mi pesquisa para esta palestra, hablar sobre biocompostos, que es justamente poder mixturar o potencializar plásticos con eh, materiales de fonte natural. Y entonces, en ese sentido, yo hice una pesquisa donde tenemos aquí un, 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 un trabajo feito por, por colegas de India, donde la ropa esportiva eh, eh, sobrepasa cosas que no pensábamos, por ejemplo, una malla de chipolipropileno con eh, a posibilidades de ser de, de poli, po, poliamida, ¿no? Es muy interesante. Eh, lembremos que cuanto más rápido una ropa disipa, ¿no? La humedad y el calor, mejor pueden ser cualificadas eh, sus propiedades de confort, de conforto. Por esto es eh, muy interesante eh, de este estudio. En este estudio, las eh, fibras utilizadas para eh, para eso fueron, fueron polipropileno, que tiene excelente, excelente transporte superficial de, de humedad, pero eh, es pobre ¿no? eh, en su absorción. Y el algodón y el modal, que tienen buena absorción de humedad, pero que no tienen una buena propiedad de transporte de humedad. Eh, eso es lo que significa un biocomposto. Combinar a fortaleza de un con la fortaleza de otro. Y aquí, eh, en el vestuario de malla plana, ¿no? eh, con pepe algodón y e modal, vemos los resultados, eh, por ejemplo, aquí de absorción de agua, que tiene un, una significativa un significativo incremento, ¿no? Y faz que te, te, tengamos, ¿no? Una amplia gama de posibilidades para experimentar nuevas estructuras y materiales, ¿no? En este, en este, en este camino, esta jornada de tejidos inteligentes. Bueno, y uh, bueno, yo quiero convidar a ustedes, aprovechando el espacio, para el lanzamiento de una marca brasileira que será feita en noviembre, uh, donde espero poder eh, comentar para ustedes como un caso de suceso en el futuro, donde yo estoy siendo justamente una persona que estaba haciendo todo el desarrollo y, y de la marca mismo y de las tecnologías que pueden ser envolvidas. Es un, es un desarrollo bastante... Eh, interesante pelo pela incorporación eh, real de lo que fue presentado para ustedes en esta palestra y yo espero poder tener oportunidad de estar compartiendo con ustedes algunos archivos o, o eh, referente a este tema bueno eh, bon. al no final era de superhéroes eh, no eh, simplemente es un gran potencial este, este mercado de e textile que motiva a nuestros visionarios emprendimientos y espero ter po podido realmente contribuir en esta magnífica serie Innova Plus América Plus Buenas tardes Liliana Rubio
natural materials were always utilized as a part of many sports activities. Natural rubber was a key element of the ball game o jugo de peloto which was a sport with characteristics of ritual ceremonial performed by the ancient Mayan civilization. Wood was also used in javelin sport as a part of Olympics games. Similar participation for natural materials such as stones and bronze or other metals for discus throw sport in Olympic games. Finally, a special mention for gut strings in archery, badminton, tennis during ancient civilizations and also modern times. As technology evolved, Materials technology dramatically changed bringing new options for those traditional sports. For example balls used as a main element in multiple sports started to be manufactured using polymers such as PVC, polyurethanes, latex, and special elastomers. One of the most extraordinary evolution process was observed in shoes applications, shifting traditional materials, like leather and vulcanized rubber to polyurethanes, EVA, nylon, TPU, and TPE compounds, where multiple materials were developed for upper and the sole of the shoe, not only making a lighter product, but also keeping and even improving performance. There are multiple examples as a part of this very fast evolution process. Golf Balls Using Polyurethane. High Performance Graphite Composites in Tennis Rackets Polyester and Nylon in Tennis Strings Where transparency it's an issue. Materials such as polycarbonate and fluoropimers are found as preferred materials. But not only specific active elements are produced using a broad range of polymers, polymers are also preferred materials for structural sports applications for multiple reasons such as lightweight, washability, and low maintenance. Stadiums, facades, and turfs are currently being built using several polymers as primary materials. During this presentation we will be showcasing a variety of polymers and their corresponding producers in order to highlight products and applications that are part of this universe of activities. Polyurethanes in Sports Applications The picture shows a super elastic foam for lightweight running shoes. Through its sealed air cells of expanded thermoplastic polyurethane, BASFS new Infinergy foam makes shoe soles very elastic and effectively absorbs shock impact while jogging. A special sneaker was the 2014 winning design in the design contest that the School of Footwear Design and Technology in Capriccio di Vigianza near Padua, Italy, has now held for the eighth time. The design is composed of an elastopin polyurethane sole, with two elastolin inserts covered by an elastolin film. Every BASFS foam has been developed for in specific application, to achieve a particular performance. Like for example this elastogran-based compression-resistant polyurethane foam. Researchers at BASF subsidiary Elastogran have developed a special polyurethane foam by adding 1 to 10 micrometer-sized carbonyl iron particles. The new technology makes it possible, for example, to precisely adjust the compressive strength of shoe soles. The tiny iron particles are incorporated to the polyurethane during production while it is still liquid. Here we have a picture showing a low-density polyurethane structure. In conventional running shoes, the cushioning starts to deteriorate after just a few kilometers. If the midsole is made of low-density, open-cell polyurethane foam, the shoe can maintain its performance for a long period of time. 
another innovative company producing unique polyurethane solutions for the footwear industry is Lubrizol offering its new Estane based TPU solutions through its Bouncel X microcellular TPU foam containing Lubrizol Estane TPU. Bouncel X benefits include lightweight, outstanding long-term cushioning, thin solid skin for durable TPU performance, hardness, and energy absorption return, high efficiency injection molding process with over molding feasibility, use of industrial regrind or post-consumer recycling possibility due to no cross-linking or chemical blowing agents in foaming process. Lubrizol makes a really light product keeping the performance with a density ranging between 0.27 to 0.30 to 0.61 to 0.66 to cover approximately 80% of the total market foam demand. Note that we are talking about a huge expansion, which is remarkable as mechanical properties are kept Lubrizol TPU is an environmental friendly product, as it is a non-cross-linked product, and is not chemically foamed. As Lubrizol TPU is not cross-linked, it can be recycled 100% of post-consumed products. Another company offering a wide range of two components polyether-based systems for sports footwear applications is Covestro. Covestro is a former Bayer company. Covestro offers its Bayflex 250, 950, and 960 series. Bayflex 257 is used in the outsole system of dual-density polyether shoe soles, translucent to opaque. Series 950 and 960 are used in the manufacture of microcellular polyurethane's inner sole providing to soles prepared from those components with light weight, comfort and durability. Polycarbonate resin and sheet helps to meet the needs of architects and designers for sports facility applications. Whether the project involves vertical or overhead glazing for translucent or transparent daylighting, polycarbonate materials help designers to create shapes that would not be possible with glass. Applications include canopies, facades, security windows, shelters, and skylights, to name just a few. Covestro produces the Macrolin PC brand to provide impact resistance and strength, excellent thermal stability, weatherability, high transparency, abrasion resistance, and cold formability. Polycarbonates are also used in protective sports applications such as performance glasses and goggles, helmets, and masks in many sports, badminton baseball, bicycling, fencing, hockey, football, handball, hunting, and shooting, lacrosse, paintball, racquetball, skiing, and snowboarding, squash, swimming and diving. Now we will talk a bit about a new generation of synthetic elastomers in sport applications, polyether-based polymers produced by Arkema. Pebax TPE is an ultra-performance elastomer used by leading sports equipment brands such as Adidas, Nike, Puma, The North Face, etc. Sports shoes represent one of the premier markets for our Chemic Pebax elastomer. Its unique combination of toughness, elasticity, lightweight, and flexibility allows the manufacture of soles that bring performance, comfort, and precision to sports footwear. On the market for over 30 years, constantly renewed and improved, Pebax is a high-performance thermoplastic elastomer featuring a unique array of sought-after properties, lightweight, energy return, flexibility, elasticity, fatigue resistance, impact resistance. All customized and fine-tuned by changing the ratio of its two components, polyamide blocks, for rigidity, and polyether blocks, for flexibility. Over the years Pebax has won over leading sports brands including Adidas, Nike, Puma, The North Face, Babalat, and Mizuno, who have used it to design the soles of their football, rugby, running, tennis, and trekking shoes and boots, as have Scarpa, Dinafit, Fisher, and Scott, for their ski boots. 
Widely praised for their outstanding properties, Pebac soles enhance the performance of over half the soccer players in the Brazil 2014 L World Cup. Pebac's Renew, a biosourced elastomer produced by Arkema has been selected by Sony for its original soccer ball, named Join the Team. Specifically developed for donation to children in Africa on the occasion of 2010 South Africa Soccer World Cup. This ball features a dual-layered surface, one of them being in Pebax Renew, which brings 1.6 times higher durability than conventional soccer balls. Pebax Renew is a high-durability thermoplastic elastomer, partially made from non-edible renewable resource caster. We can find several applications seeking natural-based materials substitution. And one of the most interesting is bicycling where the use of nylon as a metal substitute really empowered design and creativity. The BASFS Concept 1865 is a clear example of this process, where 1865 bike design was updated under the banner of new materials for new ideas. Velocipes were known for their enlarged front wheel that improved the transmission ratio. The result, a sleek, lightweight, electrical bug that is literally reinventing the wheel for inspiring the future of mobility and compensating the disadvantages of the original design by using 24 different BASF innovative plastics. The present-day Velocipede rider can be assisted by an electric drive, as seen on the picture. Here we can see the prototype presented by BASF at China Plus 2015. The seat of the Concept 1865 is detachable and contains the battery for the electric drive. Ultramid DMGH was used in pedals and cranks, Ultramid Strucutrin rear wheel rim and Ultramid B in the production of the e-motor cover. Polyamides are also used in other sports such as skiing, ski binding, and in some tennis strings. We can also find polyamides in the production of high-performance transparent polyamide, like the Rills and Clear G350 produced by Arc Emma. Here we see Evolve Ski Sunglasses collection from Smith Optics using Rills and Clear or New. New Evolve Sunglass Frame models are entirely made of Rills and Clear or New, a bio-renewable sourced polymer derived from castor oil. Dow Chemical Worldwide Olympic Partner is one of the polyolefin manufacturers really committed to sustainable innovation providing several solutions for Olympic Games on the field of play to improve the athlete's experience. One great example is the artificial turf application. The artificial turf, which is based on the company's polyethylene and polyurethane, will be the official playing surface for hockey competitions during the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. The playing surface consists of specific high-performing materials formulated together in multiple layers. The surface system is designed to deliver enhanced durability for increased pitch life and a consistent field of play throughout the busy Olympic competition schedule. The production of synthetic turf is a highly elaborated process. The system begins with the production of the master batch and the yarn for the turf. The subsequent tufting and backing process provide a strong turf bind even when the surface is wet. For the upper surface layer, the polymer yarn provides wear resistance and energy absorption, combined with softness and speed. The complete turf system, including embedded shock pad properties, provides stability, durability, shock absorption, and force reduction properties for the benefit of the players and the game. Professional tennis strings are produced with polyester resins through an extremely critical extrusion process. Nice as a Tiverna, headquartered in Chivilcoy, Provincia de Buenos Aires, Argentina, is one of the most important filament manufacturers in the marketplace providing professional circuit players with high-performance strings. The polymer and a precise proprietary extrusion process enable the string to provide power and versatility for maximum stroke efficiency, and polyester is the best material 
for this very specific application. Transparency, environmental resistance, lightweight, mechanical resistance, and low maintenance are some of the properties sought by architects and designers of sports facilities. Fluoropolymers offer an outstanding alternative for the construction of coverage of large structural areas. Several sports stadiums are already being built using those type of polymers. AGC Chemicals, a leading developer of high-performance fluoropolymer resins, produces the Fluin ETFE fluoropolymer resins, which has provided a key architectural component of many world-class stadiums such as Arena Pernambuco, one of the new stadiums built for the World Cup Brazil 2014. To ensure the desired lifetime of usefulness, Arena Pernambuco, in the coastal city of Recife, was designed and built to be part of the Cup City. It is a one-square-mile zone of residences, offices, and entertainment venues. To integrate the stadium into this zone, and ensure its attractiveness over this lifetime, the innovative stadium facade was constructed of Fluin ETFE high-performance fluoropolymer film, this unusual material gives the stadium a futuristic rounded appearance and transfers natural light inside the facility, reducing its dependence on electricity. Approximately 25,000 square meters of AGC 0.25 mm thick Fluin ETFE film was used across the Arena S exterior. Fluin ETFE film has been used successfully for years for membrane structures and architectural facades, including commercial buildings and sports facilities in Europe and Asia. ETFE film provides superior weatherability, allowing it to withstand extreme temperatures. ETFE also exhibits excellent thermal stability, chemical resistance, transparency, and non-sticking properties. One additional advantage of using ETFE film is tear strength, it will not easily rip or scratch over time. Fluin ETFE film provides better than 90% light transmission, this allows sunlight to penetrate into the stadium's walkways and common areas while preserving a temperate atmosphere inside. It also gives facility operators to create dramatic visual effects using installed backlighting that will show for miles outside the stadium. ETFE film is also lighter than glass, which gave the designers flexibility to create a functional building that is also visually appealing from the outside. It is also surprisingly strong with a maximum tension of 3.5 kN per meter, so its strength-to-weight ratio is favorable compared to glass. The installation at Arena Pernambuco started by erecting an extruded aluminum channel frame tied into the building's structure. The film segments were then installed using rubber packing to hold it in the channels. Workers then snapped and screwed aluminum finish plates onto the frame sections, Plastic transformation machinery is also a key element to be incorporated as part of the sports goods manufacturing process. Arberg, one of the market leaders in the manufacturing of machinery for the injection molding of thermoplastic resins, has developed strong collaborative partnerships with sports goods manufacturers. Framis Kunsttoftechnik GmbH a global manufacturer of high-performance components for the sports, produces socks shoes for all the major producers of soccer boots worldwide such as Adidas, Nike, Puma, etc. Virtually all soccer boots contain functional parts made by Framis, and practically all of those components are produced by Framis using Arberg's all-rounder injection molding technology. The Arberg all-rounder T. A three-components rotary table machine was specifically designed for the volume production of footwear components. Finally we will show a very interesting application, a paraglider harness which incorporates an ultra-strong sandwich composite made with honeycomb core from Ekencore. This composite material from Tepex Dinalite. Alanx's subsidiary bond laminates is performing excellent even in extreme sports applications. 
The Harness S footboard is made of a sandwich composite just 1 cm thick, comprising thin tepex facings measuring just 0.5 mm and a polypropylene honeycomb core from Econcore NV.
Buenas tardes, colegas. PMO Polymer y América Plus tiene el gusto de presentar a ustedes el programa de educación, entrenamiento y laboratorio de innovación, el DNA de la innovación. Innovación es el verbo de la acción y el efecto de crear algo nuevo que garantice nuestra competitividad, lucratividad y sobrevivencia. Pero sabían que efectivamente el último reporte de la Forbes sobre el ranking de innovación eh, confirma que compañías que invierten en innovación generan un crecimiento de 58% de su renta líquida, mientras que las que no lo hacen solo alcanzan el 5%. Pero si es así, ¿por qué no se invierte en innovación? Bueno, pues de acuerdo con eh, la última entrevista realizada por la IBGE, el Instituto Brasilero de Estadística, a más de 100 eh, de los líderes empresariales eh, más representativos, eh, se concluyó que el motivo y el mayor obstáculo es la falta de información referente a cómo incorporar, cómo acceder a nuevas ideas y cómo medirlas. Y por esta razón, eh, decidimos eh, preparar junto con un equipo multidisciplinar para ustedes un programa de educación y entrenamiento con técnicas prácticas que ustedes puedan incorporar en su día a día eh, y eh, lleve a esa cultura de la innovación en las organizaciones. El programa eh, incluye las metodologías en cuatro grandes pilares que son estrategia, creatividad, diseño y modelo de negocio, que incluye métrica. Bien, eh, todo esto junto con modelos temáticos, que son casos de estudio reales que llevaremos a ustedes y que ilustran el éxito que trae incorporar innovación. Será un placer eh, contribuir y crecer juntos en esta jornada. Gracias. Liliana Rubio. Buenas tardes, colegas. PMO Polymer y América Plus tiene el gusto de presentar a ustedes el programa de educación, entrenamiento y laboratorio de innovación, el DNA de la innovación. Innovación es el verbo de la acción y el efecto de crear algo nuevo que garantice nuestra competitividad, lucratividad y sobrevivencia. Pero sabían que efectivamente el último reporte de la Forbes sobre el ranking de innovación eh, confirma que compañías que invierten en innovación generan un crecimiento de 58% de su renta líquida, mientras que las que no lo hacen solo alcanzan el 5%. Pero si es así, ¿por qué no se invierte en innovación? Bueno, pues de acuerdo con eh, la última entrevista realizada por la IBGE, el Instituto Brasilero de Estadística, a más de 100 eh, de los líderes empresariales más representativos, eh, se concluyó que el motivo y el mayor obstáculo es la falta de información referente a cómo incorporar, cómo acceder a nuevas ideas y cómo medirlas. Y por esta razón, eh, decidimos eh, preparar junto con un equipo multidisciplinar para ustedes un programa de educación y entrenamiento con técnicas prácticas que ustedes puedan incorporar en su día a día eh, y eh, lleve a esa cultura de la innovación en las organizaciones. El programa eh, incluye las metodologías en cuatro grandes pilares que son estrategia, creatividad, 
diseño y modelo de negocio que incluye métrica. Bien, eh, todo esto junto con modelos temáticos que son casos de estudio reales que llevaremos a ustedes y que ilustran el éxito que trae incorporar innovación. Será un placer eh, contribuir y crecer juntos en esta jornada. Gracias, Liliana Rubio.